So this is how it's going to work, okay? So step one is what we're doing today. You're gonna learn about bugs that you might see in different habitats, the forest, the pond, the meadow, and the stream, and you're gonna learn how to catch them, identify and release them. Step two, you're gonna team up with your siblings or your whole family. You can make a team name, uh, like I just heard Isabel's family is gonna be the paper wasps. Another example might be the magical monarchs. Um, if you're just working by yourself, that's fine, but feel free to come up with your own name as well. Uh, step three is to go out and search for bugs. Record what you find in your results sheet, and you can go as bug crazy as you would like. And there are different awards based on different categories, and I'll talk about what those awards are in a little bit. Step four, you're gonna share your photos and your findings as you go along. Step five, send in your results sheet by Friday, August 21st. And then we're gonna have an award ceremony on Zoom sometime at the end of August. And I'll send an email about that later. All right, so these are some of the awards. So the diversity award, is awarded to those who find the highest number of different bugs. The Observer Award is awarded to those who write and draw. So let's say you see a ladybug. You would write the colors of the ladybug, any observations, and you would draw a picture of it. So if you want to earn the Observer Award, you're going to write and draw what you see. Now the Identifier Award, award that's going to be pretty hard, very challenging. And that's awarded to those who identify the actual species names of the bugs that you find. So for example, let's say you see a butterfly, you have to figure out exactly what kind of butterfly it is. So monarch butterfly would be an example of the actual type of butterfly, the species name. So that's a big challenge. Now, the Joy and Wonder Award is awarded to those who have the most fun through photos. You could do bug art. You could do dances and show us pictures or videos. You can make up a song. This is a funny picture of um, a family that did a bee dance, and they recorded it. Um, you can also earn the Bug Helper Award, and that's awarded to those who take various steps throughout the summer to help bugs. And you can earn that as an individual, like um, for kids, if you help spiders, if you leave wildflowers for the bees and butterflies, um, but you can also earn it as a family, and we'll talk more about that later. And then you can win an award for individual bugs that you find. So if you find a really rare bug, you can earn a, an award for that. This is an, um, a rare ladybug that's native, a nine spotted ladybug. Whoever finds the biggest bug, <laughs> of course this isn't real, but it's funny. Whoever finds the bug with the most legs, the most beautiful, the most camouflaged, and there'll be other surprise awards too. Who knows what you'll find? I don't know, so we'll have to see. So why bugs? Well, you won't believe this, but for every person in the world, there's 1.4 million bugs. So there's 1.4 million bugs times everybody in the world. So for Catherine, there's 1.4 million bugs. For Rafe, there's 1.4 million bugs. That's how many bugs there are in the world. They're so important. I don't know what would happen if all the bugs disappeared in our world. Pollinators like bees, they pollinate all sorts of foods that we eat. There'd be no tomatoes, there'd be no watermelons, almonds, there'd be no honey, of course. Without decomposers like worms and roly polies, there'd be waste piled up everywhere. That would be super gross. And bugs are an important source of food for so many animals. And people around the world eat bugs too. I've eaten, eaten a bug or two. 
So this is a picture of um, a food web. It shows how important bugs are because they're food for other animals. So many birds rely on bugs, small mammals, and then those animals get eaten by other animals. Um, so bugs are really important for other animals. Um, and the last reason is because bugs are just so cool. Some are super strong, like this leaf cutter ant. They can carry 50 times their weight. So if you were as strong as an ant, let's say you weigh 50 pounds, you could lift 2,500 pounds. You could lift a car. Some can jump super high and super far, like this grasshopper. They could, if you were a grasshopper, you could jump as far as a football field in one leap. Some can walk upside down like flies. Some have incredible eyes like dragonflies. They actually can see the world in slow motion. And some insects and spiders can see colors that humans can't. Spiders create super strong webs. I think spiders are pretty awesome. And some migrate thousands of miles, like one of my favorite insects, the monarch butterfly. And I actually learned last year that their eyes, they have special tools inside their eyes that help them to navigate, that help them know where to go. And it, they also have like a clock inside their eyes so they know what time it is. So pretty amazing. Bu uh, bugs are also some of the best communicators and helpers. So for example, bees, bees are really great at helping each other. If like one bee finds food, then they go back and tell all the other bees in the hive exactly where to find the food by doing this waggle dance. And they actually use math and the angle of the sun to tell the other bees where um, to find the food. So bees are extremely smart and they help each other and communicate with each other. And ants are also great communicators and they're also incredible builders, like these ants building an ant, um, an ant colony. So what is, what exactly is a bug? So when people say bug, they usually mean insect, but spiders aren't insects and neither are worms or roly polies. So there's actually a group of insects that are true bugs, but we're just going to use the common meaning of the word bug. So we're gonna say a bug is anything without bones, without a backbone, which is an invertebrate. So butterflies, spiders, um, even snails, we'll call all those animals bugs for our challenge. All right, so where and how to search for bugs? Well, the great thing about bugs is you don't have to go very far. If you're at home, you can just go right out into your backyard or even just on a sidewalk. You're guaranteed to find some kind of bug. And also the time of the day that you go out as well. If you go out at night, there's a whole nother world of bugs out there. So if you're ready to go on a bigger adventure, you could check out a local meadow, pond, stream, or forest. Um, so we're going to talk about bugs that you might see in a meadow. In a meadow, you can, in order to explore bugs in a meadow, use your eyes and ears to look and listen. You can also spread out a white blanket or an old sheet and see what hops or crawls on. Other good tools include a magnifying glass, a bug box. You can just make your own using an old plastic container or a butterfly net. And so I took some videos of myself and you guys can watch this on your own. Um, I'm gonna share and send this PowerPoint to everybody. So this is me just putting out an old white curtain and seeing what kind of bugs hop on. Okay, so here are some bugs that you might see in a meadow. A spider, and this one's really cool, he's camouflaged. Grasshopper, Katie did. A bee, praying mantis. 
and a butterfly. And if you want to identify your butterfly, this is a good link. And of course, monarchs, one of my favorites. So if you see a monarch butterfly and you want to figure out if it's a male or a female, look at the outside of, um, of the wings. And the males have these two dots down here and the females don't. And the females um, stripes are a little bit thicker as well. And the other day I actually saw a female laying eggs on milkweed. So that's where you go to, if you wanna look for monarch caterpillars or eggs, you look um, on milkweed. And I've written down a whole list of different parks that I know for sure have milkweed. Um, so you can check out this list and I tried to make them, you know, different places so that depending on where you live. So here's another video that I took of me looking for an egg, a monarch egg. So you can watch that on your own. And look how beautiful they are. Just a little, a little pearl almost on the underside of the leaf. And there's the caterpillars or larva. And if you don't know what milkweed looks like, I took a video, um, about that. And here's a cool bug helper idea. You can make a butterfly puddle in your backyard and that will help butterflies. And last bug for a meadow is a ladybug. And this is a cool pr um, project. If you click on this link, it's called the Lost Ladybug Project. If you wanna participate in that, it's when you take pictures of ladybugs and you send them in to scientists. So the next habitat that you can go to is a stream. This is one of my favorite things to do in the summer because you can get your feet wet and it's a lot of fun. So if you're looking for bugs in a stream, you look underneath rocks. Because if you're a teeny bug, you don't want to get washed downstream. So rocks are the best places to look for bugs. And all you need is a bucket because you can just pick up a rock and swish it around and see if any bugs come off. And when you're returning them, you always gently let them swim out. You don't pour the bucket from high up. So you want to be very respectful. And this is a video of me demonstrating that and you can watch that on your own as well. And here are some good places that I recommend. And, but there's lots of great streams. And this is another cool thing about the bugs in a stream. The types of bugs you see can actually tell you how healthy the stream is. So if you see these bugs in a stream, it's probably a healthy stream with lots of oxygen. This is a water penny. Oh, this guy is super cool. He's called a caddisfly larva. He actually has this special glue inside of his body that he uses to make his own little home. And he can make his home out of little rocks or little sticks. And I've even seen videos of people giving them little pieces of gold and they've made beautiful gold homes. So caddisflies are really cool. And here's another picture of them. Well, you can't see them, but they're inside their homes there. Okay, this is a mayfly larva. So they all, most of these animals are flies, but they're born in the water. And so when they're a larva, they're still babies. So a mayfly has three tails, usually most of them. A stonefly larva has two tails. And I've included a link for identification guide. So if you wanna go stream crazy and learn exactly what you're seeing, you can click on this link or you can look at this identification guide. And this is exactly what we do in fifth grade at Willow School. So I'm sure Rafe remembers this. And if you want to see if your stream is healthy, you, yep. can, look at, you can look at this guide. All right, so bugs in a pond, another great summer activity. You don't necessarily even have to use a net, you can just use your eyes and ears to look for flying animals around a pond, like dragonflies and damselflies, or you can use a net in a bucket to look for bugs that live underwater. And here's a video I took, you can watch that later. And here are some good ponds that I know of in local parks. Okay, so your list for a pond, dragonfly, dragonfly larva, 
A damselfly, they're similar to dragonflies, but this is the difference. When damselflies are resting, are, are perched, their wings are together. Dragonflies, their wings are out. And damselflies are usually skinnier. Okay, and this is what damselfly larva looks like. Snail is also included. Water striders are really cool because they hop on top of the water. I always thought that would be a really neat thing to do. A water boatman uses their legs to um, paddle. A oh, water scorpion is really cool. They're not scorpions, they won't hurt you. Their tails are used as a snorkel to breathe air out of the water. So they won't hurt you. If they do eat other bugs, see their cool mouth part. Um, but their tail is not to sting you, it's to breathe. Okay, so to identify the bugs in a pond, you can also use the stream guide that I showed you. All right, so bugs in a forest, how to explore, turn over logs. I think you guys are all pretty good at that. Look on the leaves and bark of trees. Here are some bugs to look for. Ants, cicadas, pill bugs or roly polies worms, millipedes, and centipedes. Oh, and beetles. This is a fun bug helper idea. You can build a bug hotel. Okay, bugs at night. So this is a really cool thing to do in the summer because you won't see this any other time of year. Um, moths, moths are fantastic creatures. And this is a beautiful luna moth. So if you want to learn more about luna moths or exactly the moth that you're looking at, you can click on these links. And July 18th is National Moth Week. So if you want to learn how to attract moths to your backyard, you can click on this link. Um, this is a fun thing to do at night. If you hang up a white sheet with a light nearby, you can, the moths will be attracted to the light and you can see the moths and take pictures of them. And of course, lightning bugs. I've seen some this week. I'm excited about lightning bugs. Just always remember to return them if you capture one in a jar. And crickets as well. Um, so these are two good books, if you would like, um, to identify insects. This one, they have really good pictures in them. And this is a good website if you wanna share your findings with scientists and also helps you identify bugs. It's called iNaturalist. So be a, be a bug helper. So for everybody, even if you don't want to earn the bug helper award, everybody should return bugs to their homes. Please be respectful and gentle. Um, if you want to help bugs in more ways, you may earn the Bug Helper Award. And you can earn the award as an individual. So for each of the students, you can earn the individual award by helping spiders and ants, just looking at wildflowers instead of picking them. Um, after returning bugs, making sure that you return them. Um, being careful that after you turn over a log that you put it back. Um, by planting native plants like milkweed and goldenrods that bugs eat. And then your family can also earn a family level award by doing things that help bugs by not using pesticides or inorganic fertilizers, supporting local farmers who limit the use of chemicals, and by composting. So let me quickly show you what the results sheet looks like because this is what you're gonna be sending in. Okay, so everybody's gonna have one of their own results sheet and it's due by August 21st. You'll write your team name. And if you would like, you can just go through the list and check off the different bugs that you see. So for example, if you see a bee, you would put a check mark here. And that's all you need to do if you wanna earn the diversity award. But if you wanna earn more awards, let's say you wanna earn the observer award, 
then you would also draw a picture of a bee or write what you're observing. So the colors of the bee or what the bee is doing. If you want to earn the Identifier Award, you would write the actual species name. And then if you are doing something fun about with bees, you could attach anything with joy and wonder. Um, and if you want to submit your bug for any individual bug awards, like you think you have the most beautiful bee in the whole world, you could say, I want to submit my bee for the most beautiful bug award. And so for each habitat, there's a different um, results sheet for that. And you can change this. If this does not work for your family, you can change this sheet. And the bug helper results sheet is on the last page here. Okay. Okay, so again, don't forget to share your photos and findings as you go along. I'll share this um, Google Photos um, with you so you can all share your photos with everybody. And then I'll send you more information about the award ceremony. And most importantly, have fun. Thanks for coming and I will stick around for questions and if anybody wants to chat.